everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Zosha. I'm an independent musician and a freelance graphic designer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I shot and edited this photo that I used for my most recent single release. I love working with professional photographers, but I also have found it so beneficial to be able to shoot and edit my own photos. Not only has it saved me a lot of money, but I also really like to work at my own pace and not feel rushed to finish in a certain amount of time or only be able to get a certain number of looks. For this shoot, I rented my gear from Borrow Lenses here in LA. I rented a Sony A7S III along with a 50 millimeter lens. For lights, I rented the Aperture MC4 light travel kit. Um, and these lights can be changed to any color. And I also rented a tripod because I didn't have one at the time. I rented all of this for a week and with a very good coupon code, it only came out to $315. For this photo, I shot it in my living room against a white wall and I used two aperture lights at a time, experimenting with different colors and different placements. I also played around with turning on lights around the room, different ceiling lights and floor lights just to add a little bit more brightness. When it comes to the specific camera settings, I am not a professional photographer, so I do recommend you watch some videos on how to set up your specific camera. It will also take some adjusting and experimenting based on your setup. So that's an overview of how I shot the photo. Now I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop so I can show you my editing process. So here's the raw photo in Photoshop and I will show you how I edit it. edited it. Ugh. I'll show you how I changed it to look like this. I wanted this to have a bit of a ghostly look, like part of my body was evaporating in a sense. Um, or you can also think of it as like a light, a light streak coming off of my face. And I wanted it to look like just the pink part of my face was being affected. So I started by duplicating the, the image by clicking on the layer and hitting Command J. And then I right clicked and converted to Smart Object. And I only wanted this to affect the pink part of this photo, so I double clicked into this layer and turned off the green and blue channels right here. So this would only affect the red channel of this, of this layer. Then I went to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. I set it to negative seven degrees and somewhere around 250 pixels. Okay. I wanted to make it look like this was coming off of my face, so I shifted this layer to the right a bit. But there are parts of this layer that I don't want to be affected by the motion blur, so I'm going to add a mask by clicking down here. I'm going to take a brush, a little bit smaller. set it to black and paint off some of it down here that I don't want to have blurred. Now I want to bring up the brightness and I'm going to do that by adding a levels adjustment layer. So I'm going to click down here and levels and I'm going to bring up the whites quite a bit, like that. But it's making the left side over here too bright, so I'm going to click on the levels mask and again take a brush that's totally black and paint out this area over here. And I want to make it even a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add a brightness adjustment layer by clicking down here and brightness contrast. And I'm gonna pull the brightness down and then click on the mask. And I'm gonna invert the mask by clicking Command I. And then to paint on this brightness adjustment, I'm going to change my brush to white and then paint it on over here on the left side just to bring down that brightness.
I'm doing this because I really want to make sure that the focus stays on the face. I really want your eye to go to this pink portion of the photo. Actually, the brightness over here on my chin is a little too intense, so I'm gonna click back to the levels layer and brush to black and paint that off just a little bit. This being a little too distracting. Okay, almost done. I have two last steps. I'm gonna add a new layer and set it to overlay and then grab a white brush. So I like to add a bit of highlight to places that I want the eye to be drawn to or places that would naturally have a glow to them. So I will definitely do it to this eye right here and to this cheek. And this is very intense, but don't worry, I'm gonna turn it down. Yeah, so, but this is too much, so I'm gonna turn down the layer opacity to like 50%, so it's maybe even less. So it's pretty subtle, but it just adds, yeah, even less than that. Just adds a little extra glow. So the last step for this photo is adding a layer of grain and vignette. So I'm gonna add a new layer again and grab a gray and fill this layer with the gray. Change the layer blend to overlay. Convert to smart object and then go to filter, camera raw filter. And down here under the effects tab, Add some grain. And because this is a smart object, we can always go back and tweak this. So start with that amount. And then down here at vignetting, I'm going to pull it down like that. Click OK and see how that looks. And I'm seeing here that I want this corner to be a little bit darker, so that's why I leave my vignette and grain layer as a separate layer so that I can go back underneath and make final adjustments to the other layers. So I'm gonna go to my, yeah, I'll take, I'll go to my levels layer and on the mask, I wanna paint off some of this corner. So I'm gonna grab a black brush and turn the opacity down to 20. Something like that. Okay, that feels a little bit better. So that is how I shot and edited this photo. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.